Oh, look at this, ladies and gents. It's seed 80. And his name is Lamik in game. So I guess we'll stick with that. He's playing as the Mongols. He's going to TC the middle here with the Mongols because he wants all that hunt. And kind of what we thought would be the standard on this map is TCing the outside because that's where the food, the wood, the stone is. Uh, but there's not as much food, I guess. And we've got Ozone from Columbia here in the blue. Now, Ozone, I just said this is the favorite. Uh, and I, I have a lot of faith in Ozone to get the job done here today, but this Lameek player kind of came out of the blue. This isn't a player you've probably seen much of. On the bracket, he's named Lamo. Um, I accidentally typed LMAO. Um, so just not a player you've, you've seen out there, but he's 2k3. If someone could do hashtag match in my Twitch chat, I'll get his exact elo now. 2300's no joke, especially when like two years ago, I thought it was just some other guy who renamed his re renamed himself, you know? So, uh, oh, actually, the, the hashtag match won't work because the game just updated and none of the stuff works. So everything's down. Never mind. We won't get that info. Ozone seed could have been better in this tournament. We did seed everyone past 32 on ELO, and his ELO is, is, is a bit down compared to where it usually is. He's picked the uh, Gurjaras here. Is going to gather up some of the sheep with the horse around the outside. That's an interesting strat. There's not a lot of sheep, though, so I'm not sure I'm really in love with this. He is going to walk over here, bring in a boar. And then also has another boar pretty close by. I guess there is a decent amount of sheep, More now that I think about it. There seems to be sheep in all directions. Now, L Lamik here, he has to walk a long distance to get wood but that might be worth it with the mongols because it's really nice to be so close to all the hunt and then you have the tc right on the gold so most players have not tc'd the middle we wanted to make it so it was possible to tc middle but we wouldn't want it to be tc middle all the time so there are a couple trees here for example if you wanted to take that but he's not too far away from wood so i think this is actually pretty good and plus, you can walk this way to get the boars. I really like the Mongols on this map, the more that I think about it. I mean, Mongols are fantastic on a bunch of maps in this tournament, because there's a couple of them that have more hunt than a normal map. So, chat, real quick, predictions. Predictions for the series here. I, I'm i going to go 3-1 Ozone. Um, that's my prediction. I, I do think that, from what I've talked to him, he, he has practiced a bit. Put some time into prepping. That's kind of the big thing. I've He's played more mixed map tourneys. He's the higher ELO player. I think experience is going to come through today. But I'm seeing this start for the Mongol player right now. Already having a piece of the gold in the middle when there's not a lot on the outside. And his build's looking pretty good. Mongols could be really dangerous here. Here go the sheep. Headed on home. So he only has six sheep. Not even able to fill the mill. He did get two boars, and Ozone's going to walk this way to get the next one. So Ozone has seen the wood on the outside, so that should tell him that his opponent does TC the middle. I feel like archers could be quite good for either player, but maybe particularly red because he can just take the gold next to the TC. What you can't do is you can't protect your wood line easily if you're in red's position. And then if you're Ozone, you don't really protect the gold that easily. Oh, and Ozone doesn't know about this two-tile gold. Also, no loom for Ozone. He's getting loom now. You need a house trick. Dude, everyone's so good at that. Everyone can do that these days. There used to be a time where nobody would do that, except for a couple players. That was just like weakening the, the boar with the TC. And now you have people bringing in boars from the opposite corner of the map. Res Collect is pretty close. Uh, I think Ozone will take that because the Mongols are expected to have a pretty big lead. And Ozone brings the Boren underneath the TC, no problem. Could justify a Fast Castle. Fast Castle Step Lancers? For Red, maybe? There's still so much hunt around. The Red is bringing in another Boren. Now, something that happens to me when I play Mongols is I'm so focused on the hunt, I'll either push in the deer, or in this case, you're walking to get the deer, and you forget your second building. Because you make the lumber camp, but you don't need the mill, and you forget it. I think that's going to happen to red. Let's see. 
Let's see if he goes to click up here and then has an oh crap moment. Nope, he's going to build his mill there. So he did at least realize. And it makes sense to build the mill there anyways. But he could have been up a lot faster with all this food that he's brought in. Ozone's up. Ozone collecting all the sheep. Has that mill filled with 10 sheep? Is it worth it to build a second mill? And put... And like distribute them 6 and 6 or something? What do you think? Minus Zero says, T90, how do you do the house boar trick smoothly? Every time I do it, I need to click the house several times to de-aggro the boar. Well, that's how you do it. So just placing the house foundation over the boar doesn't do it. You need to hit the house foundation while the boar is over top of it. So you don't need to hit it multiple times. Typically, though, players are spam clicking just to make sure they get it right. But how you described it is how it works. But a lot of people see that and they think you just place the house over it, but you need to actually bop it. You bop it, don't twist it. Don't, what is it? Bop it, twist it, pull it. Yeah, don't don't pull it either. The boar won't like that. Uh, and then if you do that, it's fine. So with all this food income coming in for Lamique, I think this is definitely some type of a fast castle play for him. He's going to have all the food. He's got the gold underneath the TC. Ozone coming to the middle now. And he's going to be feeling some pressure to get some damage in. I, I wasn't sure a second mill would necessarily be worth it. But I think he's concerned because if Mongols aren't up faster than you, they're going fast castle. This is not a comfortable position to be in. And also, Red is blocking the village right now. <laughs> the scouts are going to be coming out. Does Red know about the scouts yet? Red doesn't know anything about the build from Ozone. And Red is Loom in Q, but he doesn't have Loom yet. Loom should be the first thing that comes in, though. There it is. Ozone's going to go scouts. Ozone's going to go archers. This is going to be crazy. And Red's going to drop a range. Which makes me think instead of Step Lancer, he's going to try Fast Castle Cav Archers. Actually might end up being pretty good because he's not going to have the food income any longer. It's just going to be wood and gold. Maybe it's panic from him. Maybe, you know, he doesn't know how to, to, to manage the situation. A uh, bit of a speed up there, but Ozone looking for his first kill. The pressure comes in. Not able to kill the villager yet, but it's going to be skirms. It's going to be scouts, potentially archers from Ozone. And he's going to come to the middle to take the hunt as well. So first game of the series, seed 49 versus seed 80. These are the, the rankings that should end up being pretty close together. But, you know, I'm worried for Red because it looked like he could have had it. He could have clicked up, but then he panic produced a couple skirms and spears. And he had to pull the villagers off food. And now he's just so close to clicking up to Castlage and yet so far. There's a really valuable timing here for Ozone then. Because if I'm Ozone, I'm worried my opponent's clicked up already. The thing is, guys, Ozone just doesn't give you time. Like, if you try stuff like this, he's going to apply pressure at the right times. He's got four on wood. Oh, he is bringing the additional sheep and turkeys to the new mill. And red, oh, painful. Red trying to click up, using the market so much. Now needs to wait for the golds. And he's going to click up here. Okay. There he goes. So, is it worth it to pull 10 vills and just toss them on the stone right now to get a castle? It might end up being worth it. The skirmishers focusing down the archer there. There's spears around as well from red. Well played. Ozone's dropping a tower. This tower might not stay up. There are weak vills around for uh, for red, though, so he has to be really careful. Castle Age, you could see knights, you could see siege, you could see cav archers. There's lots of things that could come, but resources are at the limit right now for red. And Ozone's going to try his best to kill the vills, but there's spears around, right? And Ozone needs to kill those spears with the skirms. And the skirms are getting focused down. Really well played from Red. That is beautiful job. He only lost one vill. And sure, Red's eco has been inefficient. But same with Ozone. And Ozone's got all these vills here. So it's not like... You know, if Red could get some stuff out at Castle Age here, it's not like Ozone's eco is going to be safe. 
Scalper Kid, thanks for the Prime. Welcome. Rependium, thanks for the 10 months. Thank you, Tones Bones. Resources aren't looking great for Red. If he wants to go for some of the things I mentioned. But he's, he's essentially like... He's at least fast-tracking to Castle Age. Ozone's probably going to stay full feudal here. I don't think Ozone's going to change his plans at all. But taking what he can from the hunt. And more scouts in queue. And, oh, dude, Red, you've got to wall this up, my friend. All the pressure's been in the middle. And Ozone's going to switch the directions now. He's going to hit the Vils on the wood line. He's going to get one kill. Red with the House Foundation. House Foundation sniped. Going to get another Villager kill. And now the Spears need to be here as well. So Red needs to back away. All good damage for Ozone. But Res collected still really close. And Ozone loses all of his scouts. Crazy thing is Red can't, he can't afford a ton. But he's going to go Siege. He's going to go Monks. I mean, if he goes Scorpions, guys. As weird as that sounds. Mongol, Scorpion, Fast Castle. It could be so good. No, Red! It's been okay. It's been okay. But I think you still just, with all of every, everything that's happening, having to track the armies. Did forget about his hunters there. What a messy game. Guys, I think we're going to see a second stable from Ozone. Like he knows it's going to be Monk Siege. Full scouts feels like a really good play here. There's the second stable. He's got 13 vills in the middle. So, like, Red red could get 13 villager kills pretty quickly here if Ozone isn't careful. Ozone also making Feudal Age scouts right now. So, Feudal Age scout... Uh, sorry, Feudal Age camel scouts. Oh, man. This is so good for Mozone. He he knows that Red's trying to all in him in the middle. So he continues to try and hit the back area. And ideally, for Ozone, he's able to pull Red out of position in the middle as well with this. He does have armor. He does have forging. Ozone's killed his fifth vill. This should be more than that. There's a bunch of weak ones in here. And... I actually can't see the HP on the scout. Oh, Ozone getting two more. Gonna get three more. That's two more. And now Ozone's abandoned the middle with a bunch of vills. So he's left the middle because that's a problem. So 7-0 KD. But Red has all the gold. And Red has Siege. And Ozone will never be in Castle Age. So I'm not ready to say this one is, is anywhere close to over yet. The key for red is, I guess, spears. Like, monks don't actually add any value if there's just mainly scouts out there. But I think spear siege is essentially what you want. I think. More scouts from Ozone. You got to conserve your mass. Siege is expensive. You got to build this up slowly and then get to the number where you could just completely smash your opponent in the face. But it's got to be a slow crawl across the map. You have to be cautious if you're red. And you have to keep your wood line protected. Walled up is the best way. Ozone's scouts get found. Ozone's vills here are going to run away. And Ozone's still producing more scouts. No bloodlines for Ozone. That's a pretty big upgrade if you're going to take lots of engagements with scouts. He's going to find the kills here. The red is fine out here for now. And here comes the siege. Huh. Ooh, hold on. Lots of spears. Ozone has to be careful. Actually, he glides on through and he snipes it. And he doesn't lose a single unit. Wow, that is super worth it. And he's still keeping things active back here. Oh, Ozone knew the monk was pulled away to probably go after the camel. Scout comes over. Yeah, Red is falling apart, guys. Red is falling apart. His initial push isn't going to work, so he's going to try and he's going to like go for a boom now. But that's going to mean a lot of time for Ozone to run around with scouts and likely find some value. And Ozone is obsessed with feudal age. Ozone loves a good all-in feudal. Um, if you if you watch his style for Arabia, not that he always does that, but he's got berries here. He's got berries here. 
He's got two mills filled with all this the sheep. He's in a really good position right now. And resources collected difference is wild. But monks could be a problem. Dude, Ozone, you don't have bloodlines. That should be a horrible fight. That is absolutely, positively horrible. <laughs> Everything was fine. <laughs> Everything was fine. And now, now Red dropping the second TC. Getting eco upgrades. Ozone's forever futile. I, I mean, it, actually, that was a huge swing. Because the expectation is that this army could accomplish a lot. Might not be able to accomplish as much now. Seven to one eco KD uh, for Ozone this game. And he's going to snipe a monk there. But the Camel Scout's actually a big deal. The Camel Scout really helps out against that. I think Ozone needs to get to Castle Age. Especially now that his scouts haven't accomplished a ton. This is good work, sitting behind the wood line. And um, two TCs for red. Red will probably be even with Ozone on villagers once Ozone makes it to Castle Age. If Ozone doesn't kill more. But the efficiency for Ozone's economy has been way better. Again, I think he probably thinks he has bloodlines. So I guess Ozone's plan is map control and then castle in the middle to get gold, right? He is actually freely mining gold and oh god, the Vils are abandoning the wood line. Ozone sees the monk. Ozone will kill the monk. There's not many spears around right now. And Ozone's gonna feast. One more kill, two more kills, three more kills, four more kills. Yeah, this is really nice for Ozone. Red spears are over here, guys. He can't keep up. You know what you don't want to do with Mongols? You don't want to make spearmen. You don't want to make skirms. You want to be on cav archers, step lancers, siege even. But I think Ozone's aggression just kind of made it awkward for Red to get to his initial plan. We saw it earlier today. Someone tried a really greedy fast castle with Mongols, got to Castle Age, and then didn't have the resources to do much, right? So how big of a message is Ozone going to send with this castle? Is it just going to be a, okay, I'm going to win the game, Castle. Is it going to be like a, this is what you're in for, buddy. This is what you should expect. This series, right? I think that's a thing. I think that people, game one, if you smash your opponent, could really affect their confidence levels. Or if you fail building your castle, it could affect your own confidence levels, but... I think if he can just lure Red's army out of position, he could drop a castle right on Red's TC here. You don't have to do it that way if you're Ozone, though. It would be more than fine to just boom, keep running around, still an 8 vil lead, getting the light cav upgrade now. Ozone doing a couple other things here, bringing the skirms over to help with some of these spears. Bloodline's coming in for Ozone, probably thought he had that upgrade. And there he goes, sniping off some of the spears. Yeah, it feels like Ozone's in such a such a smooth position. Red is only able to react. He's done a nice job to stabilize because I thought he was dead. He is on stone. He could maybe get to Mangadai. But Ozone can go for the for the game winning castle. He drop a castle here. And that castle will take Red off of gold. Take Red. It'll take down his TC, take down the villagers. Red does have some army around and some monks and a siege workshops there. So, I mean, it is a little risky. And Red sees this, so it's all hands on deck. He converts a vill or two. The light cav are going to dive. They'll snipe some of the monks. Ozone better wall in this castle. This castle has to go up. Needs a house wall on the other side. Dropping the house wall. Needs to get the gate down. Beautiful play. There's no range units here for Red. And even if he queued up the siege right now, it probably wouldn't be produced in time. The castle's going to go up. And Ozone only three vills ahead now. But the castle just changes everything. It becomes really tough for Red's camels and spears to, to have any effect here. And Ozone's going to have the gold secured. I still think, I mean, Red can abandon the middle for now, get to a castle, maybe make enough Mangadai. Mangadai are a really good unit, but 
this is not an easy position to be in. The castle's still so close to you. House walls from red. Red doesn't have enough stone for a castle right now. He had it right now. Maybe it's different too. Yeah, Ozone. Ozone's in the driver's seat now. Beautiful pickoffs here in the stone. The scouts from him have just been terrorizing red all game. A TC in the middle now. Bit of a raid from red though. This this feels very random. I don't think Ozone was expecting this either. This is annoying for him to deal with. Nice counter damage from red. But Ozone's up. Ozone's at 57 vils. Red's at 44. And this is before the TC goes down. This TC will go down. To the uh to the castle. To the elephant. Ozone should be able to get his villagers back to work here. Murphy's Law says I would have GG'd by now. Red's mental is super strong. Yeah, um, I've only played him in ranked, and he is a crazy fighter. Like, he, he's definitely borderline ACCM at times. Does not give up. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm only giving up if the guy makes me tap out. And when you're getting counter damage like this and your opponent's not realizing, you're probably like, well, maybe there's a chance. Here, he can clear this up. The Gozone's army isn't that crazy right now. He is going to boom on the outside. But it is a little sloppy for Mozone with this position, honestly. I think in the first game as well, you got to play on a little bit longer when you're going to lose. At least I do. Because it's like, I... When I'm in the lobby prepping for game two, I want to be able to solely focus on game two. I want the loss in game one to be out of your mind. Or out of my mind, right? And so playing on extra in a loss just kind of lets you work out any emotions in the game. It like kind of, I don't know, separates it somehow. So that would that would be a another reason. But it's not like he's playing on just to drag it on. He's he's just fighting from a position that we don't feel he can really come back with. Will be three TCs again after he loses this one. He does have gold. 500 gold banked up. But uh, Ozone's going to have all the gold. And Ozone also still has great food and wood count. Again, Red's finding counter damage here. Ozone's only ahead by 15 villagers now. But Red's, Red's also got to be careful here. TC goes down. Now villagers are going to die here. Monk Camel's a pretty pretty good defense, though. Convert some of Ozone's Camels. Ozone's going to convert the Camel back. So Red deletes it and continues to fight. Yeah, this is his gold, I guess. House Walls from Ozone. He's probably frustrated he hasn't dealt with this yet. It's gotten a little sloppy. Red still even going to take these farms? Just rebuilt a mill to take the farms right next to the opponent's castle. Why not? And he's just waiting. He knows Ozone's going to come in with Light Cav Camel. I guess his camels protect from the Light Cav. The monks convert the camels. It's maybe doable. Ozone's eco over here. Never going to be found. He's even going to... Dude, is he upset? that obsessed with berries? Why are you getting berries right now? Make some farms, man. I think you saw Red was over here, so we quickly built some more buildings and walls it up. Ozone feels like he can't lose the game. So he's just, just doing all the safe things. I would say an engagement in the middle and it's over, though. Like, priority number one is just take the opponent out of the middle, surely. Hops out of the castle after losing his scorpions. And oh, there's no monks here. Or no, there are monks here. Red's quick wall. Okay, Red needs to delete the house and run the other way. Or he needs to build a house on the other side of the monks. Huh. Yo! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> That's so sick. Again, he's such a fighter. He saves his monks with the houses. Ozone's gotta be like, are you kidding me right now? Give up, man. He's gonna TC this even. And Red's gonna lose more vills. I really think Ozone's TC ends the game here, though. There's no way that Red can take any gold now. Unless he pushes down the TC. 
Which I guess he could do. Because he has four mangonels in queue. This is also why, instead of the TC, you probably just want to buy a castle if you're Ozone. This is what this series is going to be. Ozone with the aggression. I don't think we're going to see a lot of fast castle shenanigans from Red, but I think he felt like it was worth the risk. And Red's going to drop a castle near gold. Is there a chance? It's a lot of scorpions from Ozone. This castle goes up and Mangadai start coming out. Could be doable. But I don't know if this castle will go up. Red has the monks in the mix. To convert the camels. He does convert some of them. All the light cap for Ozone go down. There's still siege. There's still monks behind for Red. Red's castle's at 60%. Ozone's bringing everything to stop this. 65% on Red's castle. I think it will complete. But these are Gurjara siege elephants. So... The, the castle will go down pretty quickly as well. The siege elephants need to be dealt with. Manganel on the right goes down. The Manganel on the left going to go down. And wait for it, guys. Wait for it. The castle is completed. And now it's down. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Those Gurjara elephants are insane. There's four of them. And they did that much damage. Wow. Okay. Well, that was a fun finish. That was also a really, really good game from Ozone. I think this is a worrying first game. You're up against Mongols on a map with a lot of hunt and the opponent's going fast castle. Like, maybe he's got the coolness of mind and confidence to just think, oh, that's fine. That won't work. But it's worked many times. And it's not the game you really want as an underdog, right? You kind of want civs with similar bonuses and more adaptable play if you're the favorite. Um... Which is what Ozone is, sorry. Red, red, that's exactly what you want. You want a Civ that could do some crazy things. Felt like he went fast castle, wasn't really sure what to do. Ozone had a great plan to keep annoying him in all the different areas, and he just kind of relaxed. Uh, Ozone was in castle age at 30 minutes, 13 minutes after his opponent, and still had more resources collected, ended up controlling the gold, and just controlled the whole game there. So there's the speed from Ozone. It was pretty obvious at times, too. Especially with how much army he had. A nice attempt from Red to start it all off, though. And here we are, game two. We got regular Nomad. We've got Ozone in the blue. And, ooh, look at these dock positions. Ozone's playing Malians. And Lamik is playing as the, uh, the Koreans. Now, a couple things have happened already. So, I think Red has an idea that Ozone is around here. But he didn't lose the sheep. So he might actually see this water because there's a massive pond in the middle. He might actually see this and think that that's the dock villager's house. Because there's always a house next to the dock usually. Ozone saw the house and the palisade. So he 100% knows the opponent has docked there. No question. I think it's better for the player who, who obviously sees this first. But arguably better for the Malians. To see this because Koreans can't defend as well because they can't make demos. Um, and then Red's TC is all the way over here. Very interesting gen. I, I'm obsessed with this version of Nomad. There's so many different things that can happen. I think it's very unlikely Ozone will ever find Red starting TC. And Red... He may actually end up wandering into the fish from Ozone at some point. But... I think he just, yeah, he just found the TC from Ozone. So one person knows about the dock. One person knows about the TC. Why Koreans for nomads? Someone asks. Well, the answer. <gasps> no, he killed the boar with his TC. Disaster. No, it's not Lamo. It's LMAO. Oh, yikes, dude. That hurts. The rare time a pro does it, right? We, we get so used to people weakening the boars with their TC. And then that's the risk of it. So that hurts. Like, even if he brings in this one, finds another boar, that's still really going to delay him. To answer the question, though, Koreans want a castle drop. Koreans want war wagons. You want a castle on the face. And, like, can you imagine a castle here against Ozone? 
Also, beautiful mining camp for Ozone. That is incredibly satisfying. You do not get this opportunity every day. But yeah, if Red were to castle here on Ozone's map, Ozone is screwed, dude. But he's not going to be screwed, at least for now. Because he's got a crazy fast uptime. What is this? 22 vils. Five fish and he's up. And I think he's just going to go try and kill the opponent's fish ASAP. This hurts. I mean, Red losing that boar also delays his feudal age time. Red could just straight up lose all of his fish right away. Bringing in another boar right now. Should be able to bring this one in. But I think like... What the castle drop player does not want is they don't want their fish to die early. And that seems to be very likely right now. This is the first time in the standard Nomad games we've seen players dock super close together at the start. Usually they've been a, a fair distance apart. So that's also what happens with standard Nomad. Uh, there's just a few luck factors here or there. Some things you have to adapt to. And Ozone is going for the, the good old fire galley sandwich. Drop the dock over here, drop the dock over here, and he's going to just try and collapse in. And Red even sees the vill here. So, oh, and Ozone is trying to trap this vill. Did he just trap the... Is there not a gap? <laughs> That's embarrassing. <laughs> he, he thought he had a masterpiece there. And now Red's running to the north. So this will at least tell Ozone that Red's TC is likely to the north. But I don't think Ozone should really... Oh! Oh! Well, okay. Can we just do a Vill battle here? Why do fishing ships have to die? Can't we just... One, play... One champion from each town shows up to fight? Okay, Ozone's following. But well, Red's fish are definitely going to go down. We're going to have a fire galley from each side from Ozone. Ozone's Vill still following. I'm I'm gonna assume he sees the house and he'll go back now. Because Ozone is a man with sense and awareness. Bro! Okay, well, he just completely forgot about the Vill. And so down goes the Vill, and Red suddenly feeling a little bit better about the fishing situation. He basically Ozone just paid a villager. To find out where the enemy TC location is. It's like if you had an option to do that in the game. Would you like to sacrifice one villager to find enemy TC location? I think a lot of people would say yes to that. So because of Red's late feudal time. And just because of Red's build. Ozone immediately knows that his opponent is going fast castle. And he knows that the best thing for the fast castle player would be lots of war wagons. So Ozone is going to stonewall. Now... Kind of interesting is Red's dock can see the stone wall. So Red will know about that. Red does not have another dock, by the way. So he's maybe he if the fishing ship survives somehow, he might build one later so he could still fish. Ozone's going for stone walls. He needs to reach Castle Age soon as well. I like the idea. And I think if you're not going to stone wall the right side, which you probably should do, you at least need to outpost the right side. I think that's the smart play here. And then red. Three farms. Mining stone will get to that castle, but doesn't know where exactly these walls are. So he might still think that he could maybe drop a castle to deny the gold. And red just like clicking these fishing ships all around, just hoping that Ozone invests. Actually wouldn't mind. I feel like Mr. Yo would would cheekily build a dock here and fish as well. I've seen so many games where the true nomad experts will sneak a couple fish in the middle, not expecting the opponent to ever find them. And if you had that dock, you could transport right across this massive pond too. Ozone is about to click up. Has seven fishing ships working. That's really nice for him. Could easily be more with full water control on the outside. And, uh, you know, Red went kind of all in game one. Didn't work. This game kind of feels like the same spot. And let's see if he goes aggressive with this castle. It's got to be forward. The best thing you can do with a castle on Nomad is range their TC, though. And that will not be possible. That's like rule number one of a forward castle. 
That that's the most ideal situation, anyways. It'd be better to get a castle that ranges someone TC someone's TC, in my opinion, than ranging their gold, let's say. I actually believe that. Just because losing a town center is so bad for your economy, and then you don't have a way to protect your eco. Wonder if Red just booms. Okay. Gets the castle. He's adding a turtle. Turtle hype. Let's go. And Red's just going to drop a castle there. Yeah, he's so far away. He probably just wants war wagon production. Uh, Ozone might have forgotten about turtle ships, guys. If Ozone starts to lose his fish to this bad boy, he's going to be one unhappy man. This is... This is... This is badass is what it is. Favorite part about the turtle ship is how the oars don't make any sense. Like, I know they made this game 20 plus years ago, <laughs> but there's no sail and there's no one rowing. How do they move? It also looks extremely heavy. <laughs> what technology did they have back then that we don't have now? All right, I already killed two fishing ships. Or I guess one fishing ship. That's annoying for Ozone. And there's the castle. So yeah, this is this is just kind of a boom. And honestly, if Red just holds the map, I think Koreans are really good long term. Dude, this is so good for Red if he can kill some fish. Turtle is MVP right now. Ozone just hasn't caught, kept track of this. And get turtled, bro. Red with the score lead. That's always nice. Ozone probably thinks I had water control. He's going to all in. Red's not really doing that. Like, Red will add a wagon or two, but Red will drop the second TC. Red's got lots of farms. Red does have that one fishing ship anyways. And here comes the Navy for Ozone. Ozone did also dock the middle here, so he'll probably add a few more fishing ships. And now Red sees the wall. Red sees the wall, and he sees that there's a castle. Now, Gabetta War Wagon's not something you see every day. I think Gabettos can kill the War Wagons if the War Wagons don't get Bodkin Arrow, but I think I would prefer War Wagons over Gabetto. And I would definitely prefer a Wood Gold Unique Unit over Food Gold with the Boom. This game goes late, guys. There is no way this game ends before him. I will give 25 subs to the stream if this game ends before him. There's no way. I'm that certain. Turtle, six kills. And it's still, he's still chugging along. Seven HP. And still at least forces the, the two fishing ships down here into hiding. There's obviously this big fish economy for Ozone on the other side of the map. Here his dock gets found. Maybe Red will try and dock. Red trying to loop around with more turtles. Because he sees that this is open. And TC number two is coming up. And the turtle went down a moment ago. I will show you that. Because it's really satisfying to watch it sink. Psh, very satisfying. You didn't think you were going to see something that satisfying here today. So, uh, I guess we're a couple seconds behind now. This hill feels very important. This area here feels like a castle here secures some critical golden stone long term. Ozone lost a villager as well. Guys, Ozone's kind of... It's not looking great, right? Like, losing some vills here or there, fish here or there. It all adds up. Does lose a Gabetto to the castle. Now Red knows he's on the way with some Gabettos. May get some revenge. Yep, they slice up villagers pretty quick. But Red might be able to make a couple wagons to come over to assist with this now. And wagons are still over here. A lot of multitasking happening right now. Because Red is really concerned those Gabetta will break in through that house. And Ozone's doing a great job. But Red does a good job as well. Ozone also has a monk to convert the wagons. Red needs to back out and save his wagon numbers. You have to say conserve that mass. And then you're probably fine. But like monks get a lot of value versus something like a war wagon because war wagons are super expensive. Ozone feels a little uncertain on where to expand, I guess, with his eco. He can't go to the right right now because the wagons. So he's going right underneath Red's castle, which feels kind of weird. 
But that's where he's going. And here are the wagons now. Wagons from Red over here just missed an opportunity to take a monk. And it's... Res collected is, is pretty much even at the moment. And the wagons are slicing up the Gabetto. This is before Bod Canero. Like, you've got a big, a big, thick wagon with two horses and wheels against a tiny, frail little lady with knives. I'm going with the wagons. Obviously, cost is a big factor. Micro is a big factor. Will monks get conversions? That's a factor, but... I think monks are maybe the best thing you can make against these wagons. Gabetto... I think Ozone thought, I will have the better economy. Gabetto monk is fine. Because I will, I will have more eco. That's not the case anymore. Not at all. Red has been really stubborn on this side. Ozone might be a little frustrated. And like I said, guys, we've got ourselves a series. Let's go. Let's go. The only thing that would make this, this series bad now is if this somehow doesn't go to imp because I bet subs on it. It's kind of interesting. Red can't come home because Ozone walled this. And red doesn't have any idea that that's walled. That wall is actually a pretty big deal. Um, they had three TCs for red. I think red could guard tower this. Just stop ozone from utilizing the TC properly. Just deny that wood line. And red's actually going for devotion. Is there anyone here that earlier today that watched the Hope a Meal series? I was eating my lunch, watching Daniela cast Wondering Warriors Cup. She was covering the earlier sets. It was uh, Emil and Hope. And I said in the chat that devotion needed to happen. There was no devotion. A lot of wagons got freaking converted over. And welcome, welcome. It looks like Dave's finished. I assume Doubt got swept 3-0 in a very fast series. Right, guys? That's what we were expecting over here. We said we we can't bear to watch Doubt get swept. Yeah, guys. So so chat. The reason I didn't really want to cast that Doubt series, even though I love him to death, that one is over already. <laughs> Welcome everybody from Dave's channel. This series has been sick. Game number one, Ozone was 13 minutes later to the Castle Age, and he still won. And now here, this is probably going imp. The eco count's super even right now. The main thing that's worrying me about red is that red doesn't have bodkin. But we're about to see a castle. Double castle wagon production would be insane. Reminder, Ozone's got the fish. 17 fishing ships on the outside. But this castle will eliminate this TC. And the farms as well. It's going to be a really awkward eco situation. Or Ozone, if he doesn't stop this. Ozone's gonna drop his own castle. He's got a lot of monks around. Red might need to back off here. Or he can just kill the monks, but he doesn't have Bodkin. How many war wagons will he lose? Will he lose the wagons? He's focusing down the monks. There's only one more conversion coming in for Ozone. Monks are gonna die. Red's castle's gonna go up. Ozone's castle... Doubt just played a series, but we've got another Lord sighting here. This is, this is not going up. Red just says, I don't care anymore because they have Devotion. It's such a big deal with these big expensive units. Once you're at this stage of the game, you've spent this much on like this many units. You think of the cost of Devotion and it, it has to be worth it. I think it's 450 resources. And then it's it's been 1600 resources to make all the army you have right now if you're red. Like... You gotta save what you've worked for here. Ozone's castle could still go up. And the monks do have their faith. Still no Bodkin, which is stressing me out. And Ozone is probably hoping that that doesn't come in. And Ozone, despite devotion, gets the conversions. It's kind of funny. Wagon v. Wagon. The wagons don't really do a lot of damage against each other. It's the same with Hussite wagons, too. And Reg is chilling underneath the TC, making it messy. Feels like they're doing no damage against each other. And now Red's even going to add some siege. You got to go in. 
Ozone just clicked imp. Not in this TC. That would be unwise. But you gotta go imp here if you're red. This should go into a Trebor. Ozone's castle will actually complete. In a moment. Eventually. It will complete. Can red settle his mind? Oof. Big shot and go up. Because if he makes Trebs from both his castles, he could take down both of red's castles. And red doesn't necessarily have a plan beyond war wagons right now. Red could be in trouble here. Nice hold from Ozone. To me, this felt like, like Ozone was a little overconfident with his position. And got, you know, was a little uncertain with what to make in the mid-game against the wagons, which is completely fair. Like, honestly, in hindsight, he probably could have just opened with monks instead of his own castle. Red's up as well. He's going to be a minute behind. Do both of them need to be imp for you to pay the gifted subs? Yes. If they both make it to imp, I'm not gifting subs. I, I made a bet earlier, guys, that I would gift subs if this game did not go to imp. I think this pond could be really valuable. If this gets really competitive... He has seven wagons for Ozone. But Ozone can never get more upgrades on the wagons. And Red... Wow, Ozone's got a lot of stone coming in. Red can get Bod Canero and his wagons can be stronger here. Uh, this this wall as well, we talked about it. It's such an important aspect of this for Ozone. They'll both make it to him. So I think I'm fine on the gifted subs. 10 table, thanks for the 13 months. Welcome, man. It's been a fun day. This tournament's been sick so far. We have Redemption coming in for Ozone. The Monks are going to be interesting because that's pretty much been the main army for Ozone. And he's going to be ahead in the Trebs. So if he can be ahead in the Bombard Cannon War and the Treb War and then convert enemy cannons, this could work really well. Chat, please say the words. And I promise you it's going to work if you all work together on this. Say Bod Canero, okay? Say it. Because Red's, Red needs your help. He's going to think he's going to get Bracer, and he's going to get Bodkin right now. He's like, oh, Bracer. Let's go to my Blacksmith. Oh, shoot. That's Bodkin Arrow. Really? Oh, goes for Trebs out of every castle. Getting Masonry. This, this all makes sense to me. Has Chemistry and Q behind that. This, this is so important, these timings here, right? Technically, could have had masonry in Castle Age. And now chemistry is already in for Ozone because he's Malians and that research is extra fast. Ozone's fallen behind in bills, but he's got lots of momentum now with the Trebs and soon the cannons and then the monks. And with, with like how much gold and stone is right in the middle here, this is a big, big deal. Ozone snagging masonry. Dude, Malian University text researching faster is such a nice bonus in these scenarios. It can bail you out of rough spots so many times. But Red's got 20 villagers repairing. Ozone's got like five, six. I don't know. Red eventually maybe needs to give up on this one. And still no Bodkin. Okay, now he's getting Bodkin. Stone access will be important. There's stone over here. Red did make a transport, but he can't use it now because he needs his wagons. Ozone's castle is down. Ozone is pretty housed at the moment, too. Red's castle's still up. If he dives with the wagons, it could be a mistake, though. Ozone's monks might be prepped and ready to go. Let's see. Oh, they're ready, dude. He is control grouping them like all the best arena players do these days. He said, I changed it because I got annoyed after people were doing it to me <laughs> when I asked him about it, which I guess tracks. If you can't beat it, join it. So all of these are probably on a separate number. That castle's a goner for red, but he did take out those zones. But now I'm worried because Bombard Cannons are a really tough thing for him to deal with. He can't get in close to the Bombard Cannons without his wagons getting converted. Down goes a Treb. Down goes another Treb. Ozone pushing. Red is falling apart. 
He's falling apart big time here. And Ozone's just going to stick to the same. It's going to be Monks. It's going to be Cannons. He doesn't need anything else right now. Maybe later on you can switch into something else here. This is a little ambitious. But yeah, he's just got to keep on pushing. I like the Skirm Edition from Red. I think it's a good move. Technically, Cannons could deal with that, right? But you can toss away the Skirms to kill Monks and then still keep your wagons alive for other things. Both players having to expand and sort out their economies. Ozone's going to see this castle. This will probably go down very quickly for Red, but at least it buys him time. So, I don't know. Make a tower, like, right here. And then just call it a day on this side. Don't worry about it anymore if you're Red. This gives you time. His pop is really healthy. Ozone got three relics. Oh! <gasps> Yo, let's go, baby. Use the transport. Let's go. This is going to be really frustrating for Ozone. There's a lot of exposed eco back here. He is fully walled, and he is not expecting any army to be in his base because of that. And there are the wagons. So now Ozone has to deal with that. And Ozone now immediately trying to push. I love how quickly he is. Like, he immediately shifts to the next castle. Red needs to click these wagons. If he can just get them on the gold, Ozone has problems. But I think Red is hoping his castle can stay alive. Man, when did Ozone become such a such a monk player, man? Oh my god! Okay, well, he took the castle. He took the castle, but he did lose two of his cannons. And that, that could have been a problem, but he's going to trade and take down the Trebs. And he's going to take down the next Treb. Oh, that's so good from Ozone. This is... Oh, this is not. He is not looking here. That is a Doubt Castle. And um, Red still has a population lead. Ozone's at 80 Vils. The wagons have done so much here. And Ozone's still trying to focus so much on the front, right? He's bringing Monks back. He is going to complete the castle. This will probably ultimately be fine. But that damages his eco, and Red's got really nice economy back here. Red needs to use the... the you, you don't want to use the skirms against the Bombard Cannons. You want to use the skirms against the Monks. And then the Wagons can take out the Cannons once the Monks are out of the picture. That's a lot of Cannons, though, and that's a lot of Monks. And all of this, easier said than done. Red still, I think, gets decent value from this. He's killed off Monks. Hello, Ozone Trebuchets. He's killed off a cannon. So much pressure right in Red's face all the time. And Ozone is just simply not going to look at home. Cannon, cannon, cannon. Gets a kill. Trades one for one. Acceptable. I would have loved to have seen a couple more towers from Red with the unique tech of Koreans. Because that can help against Bombard Cannons. But I just don't think he had the time. And he's getting the snowballs up against him. Reminder here that Ozone is Malians. And the Malian player has 13 War Wagons. He has more War Wagons than I have really ever seen from Red this entire game because Red keeps losing the Wagons to the Monks. And pretty soon, Red's not going to have a base anymore. The Trebs are destroying everything. Ozone's mixing in some uh, Gabetto as well. And these Bombard Cannons have dealt 10k damage. The Trebs have dealt... 32k damage and red can't do any more counter raids because the wall is there and he's losing ground despite having 50 more bills it's still something that can change because skirms could still technically kill all this this is what red needs though just toss away 20 skirms to take the monks and the rest of your game will be a little bit easier for you i know it looks bad no one's going to want to sign up for this job but that's actually worth it. But Ozone's got 40 on gold, and just all of his monasteries are constantly sending forward more monks. Does anyone know, do Koreans get heresy? It's going to be skirms and also hand cannons now. This is so messy. Koreans don't get heresy. Yeah, I mean, I think if heresy was available, it would be a great tech. So the units stop switching sides, but maybe it's too little too late. Ozone's going to get the job done here. Wow. 
I think the only thing Ozone's missing to solidify this game is a castle right here. So red can't actually get close with the units and the cannons are protected. Hold on, let's see. There's there's hand cannons and skirms and like... You can't really reset your control groups on the monks easily when the fight is non-stop like this. So... Uh, the monk number is pretty low. The Gabetto number is low. The, the siege number is insane though. Ozone's gonna have like... Eight cannons. Red has lost so many vills, though. Down to 100. Running out of space almost over here. Might run out of gold and stone soon. He's losing his TCs. Ozone needs to maybe fix that food economy and then just go cav at this point. There's no danger of going cav once it's... Once your opponent's backed up like this, making primarily skirm. Crazy game. I think Red just didn't know what to make. I actually think Skirm was good, but Ozone's imp time was... And the early Imperial Age Bombard Cannon Treb push made the difference here. If Red was imp at the same time, I think he has more time to stabilize. But it's just... There were three castles here. Red committed to defending it, and he lost that whole area. And, oh man, there go the hand cannons. This will probably end up being worth it, cost-effectively, to kill this many Bombard Cannons. <laughs> That's a, dude, this is super worth it. <laughs> this is crazy worth it. But there's still more Bombard Cannons. So, you know, you're still not really winning this area back. Also, Ozone's got random wagons back here, and galleys, and fires. And, um, it's just, there's just a lot. Red is over here with some wagons, though. I think Ozone has shown that Arabia players can be clowns as well. You guys think I should remove this little monk pointer mod? I have most of my gameplay mods turned off when I cast. I find it... It doesn't really look natural, but it is kind of helpful to see monks in a big group when there's a lot going on, you know? That's why I have it on in-game too, because sometimes you lose track of how many monks are out there. It's probably helpful. Okay, a lot of you guys are saying it's helpful. Resources destroyed is bottom left now. 37. Value destroyed. 37k versus 23k. So yeah, the Bombard Cannons, the Trebs, and, and, and the kills have just done great things. What do you know? Ozone converted another unit. The red is probably feeling like he needed to win this one. But we've seen multiple sets go to five games after the 2-0 start, so I'd love to see Red turn it around. Uh, for those that watched the Jibitong Gem Jack series earlier, what the... Hold on. Hold the phone. What is happening? What is that monk doing? What is he doing? He is spinning on his friend's dead body. Maybe they weren't friends. Maybe they were enemies. What was that? What was that? I didn't know that old men could do that. He just danced on the guy's grave. <laughs> it's an exorcism. <laughs> um, okay, here come the skirms. Sniping all the monks again. These are expensive units for Ozone to be losing. But the Gem Jack Jibitong series, how, what was the order of the wins and losses there? Was it like, did it go 1-1 one, one, and then 2-1, two, 2-2? One, two, two? Or was it a 2-0 into a... Into a 3-2? Was it back and forth? That's kind of my question. I think that probably went back and forth. Ozone. I don't know if he's playing with his food here. Or if he's just really fallen off. But he's... He's not killing him. And he's going... Oh, he's going cannon galleons. Oh boy, from the middle... Or the outside. It looks like probably the outside. That's a good move. But there's turtle ships out there. I just thought that we were going to see a light cav switch from Ozone a while back. That would finish this game. And he's not quite there yet. He's dropping the stables now. Does have three relics. The trebuchets are currently battling it out against the hand cannons. And... Well, it's a pretty close fight here, folks. 
We'll see who wins. The trebuchets win. These trebuchets have been insane. I think he also got Elite Gabetto. So Elite Gabetto and Farimba Lycav is is kind of dream composition for the uh, for the Malians here. And Ozone's got the time, got the golds. It's actually not a ton of gold left on this map. There's this pile, and then there's this pile. Yeah, so Ozone actually has most of it. Red is almost out. You might be like, why is Red not GG'd yet? Well, Ozone hasn't killed him yet. This would be killing him. It, it, like, Ozone just kind of backed off with pressure. I think he's he's writing his economy. He's making sure that there could be no mistakes from here. But in a game that was kind of nonstop with action, things slowed down here for a moment. Ozone's just going to have all those upgrades when he dives in. And the Trebs continue to get kills here. <laughs> And another castle goes up. Red's like, crap, I don't have gold. Thank you. Thank you, Rami, for the info, by the way. So for those that watch the Jibitong Gem Jack series, at the same time, Good Game was playing Overtaken, and that series was also unbelievable. So if you're looking for stuff to rewatch, I think those two sets were maybe the best sets so far in the first round. Um, so definitely rewatch that. If, if you watched both, you're just a legend, Arbase. I, I assume you used both your monitors for that. But most people probably didn't watch both. The Trebs only have six kills, but they've destroyed... They've done... Uh, 70,000 damage overall. And while Red holding on, he fought on a lot in the first game as well. And that, uh, that Bombard Cannon snipes the Trebs, but... I mean, there should be a whole wave of light cav to follow this. And red is is on 20% of the map right now. Axma says, how did Fire not win in his set? Did Fire play? Oh, wait, who did he play? I forget. I remember who he was... Who he played in the bracket. I thought it was a Chinese player. Was it Bad Koala? I feel like Fire Bad Koala is not it because that would be a pretty... That, that feels like a round two or round three matchup. Ozone Strebs getting up to 75,000 da 75, damage dealt. Okay, Fire plays on Saturday. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I didn't know Fire played yet. Fire did lose in the NAC qualifier at... Uh, an area people weren't expecting, so maybe that's what he was thinking of. Come on, Red. Go If you're going by the ACCM rule, you should resign soon. You're almost 5,000 score behind. I respect the fight. I get it. But eventually, you've got to come to the conclusion that you're down two games here. You played well, but Ozone's early Imperial Age and constant pressure with the Monks and the Trebs, probably infuriating... But it got the end of you, and uh, or got the best of you, and Ozone goes up 2-0. Red, Red almost had this game. It was just early Imperial Age. That imp time from Ozone was great. His monks, his trebs, his bombard cannons did ridiculous amounts this game. I think, guys, anytime you see castle v. castle on the front, it should always be race to imp, race to imp, race to imp. Ozone not only won that race to Imp, but then he has Malians, and Chemistry came in faster. So he got the Trebs out faster and the Bombard Cannons. And then when Red tried to recover with all those wagons, the Monks were there to convert it. It was the perfect combo. He ended the game with 75 on food. He was cruising there. So well played, Ozone. Pretty decent KD. 63 conversions. <laughs> 63 conversions. And more of every resource except wood, which I guess you're not going to complain too much about. So, beautiful stuff. Uh, they they have immediately hopped into these games, so I'm sorry as we speed along here. But we got Lamik or Lamo, Ilatvian down two games. The games have been pretty competitive. I mean, game one maybe wasn't as much. Game two felt close, and we're speeding. He's Romans here. And this is his home map. And then we've got Ozone playing as the Japanese. Now, both games have been fast castle from red. Game two, it just made sense. Game one, 
Didn't necessarily have to do it. Will he go fast castle, full scorpions here, chat? We see it on Arabia. Double siege workshop scorpions all in. You're down two games. You need something. Or did he just pick the Romans because they're 5% greater efficiency? Just helps everywhere. And because uh, it could be really strong. I'm guessing it's probably the latter. I think you just picked them because their eco is insane. They still had pretty good navy as well. But we will see. So for those that missed it, I, there's 64 sets this week, so naturally we're going to miss some. Last night, the biggest upset of the tournament so far happened. We had the American player, 101st seed Eli, beating Stark 3-1. Eli is one of the few players in that top 100 who is obsessed with Nomad, always favoriting Nomad, always wanting to play Nomad. Everyone's always banning Nomad on the ladder. He's just known as a Nomad guy. Stark is like, I mean, Stark's been a pro for 10 plus years. If you remember what he did in Hidden Cup qualifiers, for example, like always has a deep run in him. It's always super solid. And Eli beat the guy 3-1. So that was a big one. Had a couple upsets. Another one was seed 80 versus seed 40-ish. Um, I, I, I forget which one that was, actually. I think that was a meal over hope, actually. Yeah, that happened earlier this morning. Uh, I didn't cast any of those sets, unfortunately. But good sets happening all the time. Uh, this is a bit dangerous here for red. Someone's asking their elo. Ozone is 2500 elo and Lamik is uh, 2300 elo. Imagine being 2300 elo and you're still only seed 80 in the tournament. There's so many players, man. It's so cool. Blows my mind because I don't know if we've ever had a tournament with over 100 players where every single player is over 2k. The lowest ranked player, so seed 128, is 2040 elo. That's pretty sick. It's, it's really encouraging, man, to see that many people sign up. So, good stuff. I, we're really lucky, man. Great community. All the big names signed up, too. We didn't have anyone saying, ah, screw these maps. Maybe they're thinking that, but they're still gonna, gonna compete and... Obviously, the money uh, goes a long way in encouraging people, but it's not all about that. It should be a really good competitive tournament. I've also been really happy with the maps. We got a couple tweaks we should probably make. We learned a couple things here or there, but the maps have been in pretty good shape for the first round. Oftentimes, it, it, it can take a little bit of time to iron out the kinks, but we did a lot of testing. Someone says, I'm 1K. Can I sign up? You can sign up for the community tournament. Which, sign-ups close in a week. We're playing on these maps as well. There's a uh, WWCC command. So if you genuinely want to play amongst your ELO bracket and play, you know, meet some people, have some fun, play in the community tournament, join there, and uh, look into it. So I think Red is going for Fast Castle. And Ozone is definitely going for Fast Castle. It's wild to me. I mean, they're probably still going to make some ships, but it's wild to me that both are going fast castle. Usually it's one, and then the other guy's trying to counter it. Someone said T90 got caught by Microsoft stealing from the prize money and can't compete in Microsoft sponsor competitions. Okay, I get you're joking, but in the off chance some idiot reads Twitch chat and actually believes what you just said, can you not make jokes that are quite that serious? No, the answer is, if Microsoft gives you money to sponsor a tournament, you can't play in that tournament. Those are just the rules. Conflict of interest. So please, please don't. Too many people get their get their information from a random comment. And that was a little bit too, a little bit too much for me. Thank you. Ozone bringing in another boar. Ozone's resources are going to be insane. But what does he do? Red is also going for an interesting build. So it's fast castle-ish, but he's going to go galleys first. I think Gozone could be in trouble here. Uh, if he doesn't make ships right away, he's probably not expecting ships, and he could easily lose, even with Japanese, lose five to six fishing ships before he has any defense. He does have two docks to recover, but 
Galleys are on the way from red. So then red stops galley production, so he has the wood for the market blacksmith, and then goes for that. For someone who lives on the internet, T90 really doesn't like drama. You just have to embrace it. I, listen, I just think people can be more creative. I'll let you decide what that means about your username, T90 I'm eating right now. But I just, there are times where I just think, you could be a little bit better than that, chat. You know, this is the same thing. People drop the minus 7k for me, you know, if I make a joke. So it goes both ways. Now, I was expecting these fishing ships to go down a little bit faster. <laughs> um, I knew he was Japanese, but still, it's like, man, it's even surprising after all these years just how strong these things really are. Two fishing ships go down. Red is going to mass more galleys, though. And then Ozone's got double range. Hmm. Double range, going to go CA. So a bit more water focus here for Lamique. Or Lemo. And then Ozone's trying... Water's more of an afterthought for him. And he definitely wants to go Cav Archers. Which, honestly, it could go either way. On one hand, you, fish is a really big deal. But on the other, wood is a massive deal. And Cav Archers sitting right on this hill could end the game. So, to me, the more I think about it, I actually think Ozone might have the slightly better position. If he can get War Galley and still get Cav Archers... It's going to be kind of tough for Red to hit and run, hit and run when the CA show up to his base. And Red's not... If Red goes immediate Siege Workshop, that might change my thinking because then Scorpions could come out. This is really fascinating. It's actually a really close game. Like, close game, different buildup than we've seen on any of the other games. Ozone. Four ships about to be six. Odd Canero on the way for red. Feels like he doesn't have all of his galleys together. I guess they're on the way. And he's going to back away. Cav Archer's on the way for Ozone. No Siege Workshop for red yet. Red doesn't know Ozone's going to do this, though. There's no scouting of that. And Ozone trying to, to loop in with his fire, but he'll lose it. And three OKD for red. Let's go. You'd love to see players that fall behind, and they've still had lots of fight in this tournament so far. And even if sweeps happen, like most of the sweeps that I've covered, there's been one or two really competitive games from the players who go down. Uh, but again, you have to focus on this constantly. It will be the better Navy long term, but this is your focus, and that could get awkward if there's Cav Archers out. Feels like Ozone denying this TC would be a big deal, but he doesn't know about that. He knows the TC is probably around here. And so Red hitting and running, getting the kills he wants. And now the Cav Archers are going to sit on the wood line here. Okay, so now Red needs a Siege Workshop right away. It's kind of panic time, honestly. Uh, but I think a Scorpion or two... Then he's on two TCs. His fish are safe, at least for now. He's got buffalo for food, too. He's in a pretty good spot. And he's sniping all the fish. I don't know if Ozone was expecting Red to, to execute this well with this type of a map. Like, this is a super smooth build. But the CA are kind of surrounding Red, and there's a lot of vital time right now as he's trying to get the scorpions out. I think everything that's happening is acceptable for Ozone if he uses Fire Galleys to snipe Red's fish. Like, sneaking back here to snipe the fish would be the game plan on this side. And he did also sneak a dock so he can still fish boom here. Red maybe thinks he killed all the fish, and that's not the case. Scorpions are needed, but Ozone should immediately go for a Siege Workshop in the middle, in my opinion. You know he's going Scorp defense. They're usually not going to add Mangonels in this position because it's costly and also the guy's Romans. So I think you see two Scorpions. Knight would be tough because you have to go underneath the TCs for that. Siege on the hill feels like the next move. And I think we'll see that from Ozone. 
fire galleys from Ozone actually patrolled in, so Red got a heads up. If Ozone wouldn't have patrolled and just snuck through, maybe would have found the fish without Red noticing, but the galleys are coming back. Red, though, isn't killing Ozone's fish either. Really close game. And there's the Siege Workshop. This hill. Oh, this hill is everything, man. Scorpion defense looks so good until you get forward Manganel pushed. And then you need your own Manganel. Or you need monks to get conversions. And I think Romans get redemption, but they don't get sanctity. So yeah, you could still convert enemy siege, but your monks are just weak. Red sending his ships down this way. I think maybe he killed off the fires from Ozone. I'm not really sure. And Ozone's placing some mills around for the buffalo and the deer. Finding a couple straggler villagers. A couple wanderers. No Manganel yet, but Red doesn't even know his opponent has a Manganel. Yeah. So Red's given up a lot of middle map control for eco. And this siege shop is like... If you created a scenario for a siege workshop to be the most efficient possible. It's like it's scripted. Like, And Red... <laughs> he's going to find out it's there. Because he's trying to get a relic. So now he knows. But uh, yeah, that monk's going to go down. And the scorpions can't be anywhere close. So this is going to be tough for Red. I think this could turn around on him fast. Yeah, he's got an eco lead. But how efficient is that economy going to be? Or is TC's even going to be up soon? Ozone, be careful! There's still water to look at. Red, if he follows this way, will probably kill Ozone's fish. Red is the better economy. But the Manganel killed one. Kills three! And could kill four scorpions here. If it, if it stops at all, it's dead. Dead. Four scorpions down to one Manganel. Brutal. Yeah, and now, now you need to go right into your own Manganels. And it always feels so weird because you're like, man, if I would have just made a Manganel in the first place, maybe this would have been better for me, but it, it didn't seem right. But guys, if it's a defensive siege workshop and Ozone's just wandering out across the map, it's completely different because there's always a chance that Red could clear this and then like, I don't know, castle the hill or something. But with these buildings here, you have to respect that you can never advance out. Forward siege, so important here. Good luck micring with with all this the potential coming in from this side all the time. Big shot there from Ozone. Ozone's turning it around, guys. I mean, he's never been massively behind. I don't mean to imply that. But he is way behind on water. That is seemingly okay, though, if he's gaining this type of control on land. Red just cannot win the Manganel battles. And this outpost is giving him vision on everything. So there's no surprises. And then look at the difference for red. It's like new Manganels and Cav Archers can be popping in all these different directions. It's unfortunate, but let's see Ozone. He notices right away. Red sees the next Manganel. Ooh, red gets the shot. It, it is unfortunate, but red just really forgot to keep patrolling here. He would at least kill those six fish and maybe the Vils around the sides. Uh, but I think it's understandable that he forgot that because of the pressure he's under. Still has to farm, still has to find some way to take resources. Gold is actually becoming an issue. The four on gold. I don't even know where they are. Oh, I guess it's the starting TC. And hold on. Red is stabilizing. Let's not let the score line dictate what we're what we're thinking. Red gets two big shots. Now, if only you had stone, dude. It's so wild. I'm loving this map more and more. Any other map, the player in red's position would have 10 on stone right now. But there's just that one stone here and the other stone here. It's harder to get to a castle. That's what you want. Ozone response. Another big shot. Eventually, if your eco is good enough, you could maybe dive with knights to try and kill the mangonels. But when you're on 3TC booming and your farming eco is being harassed all the time, it just feels so awkward. Ozone's all in, guys. One TC. One TC and, and no real sign that that's going to change. But he is getting some great shots. 
And remember, one TC eco means less time looking and managing your eco, which is a really big factor when it comes to the micro. Red gets some shots, ozone repairing, ozone snagging bloodlines. And red, I'm just, I'm just wondering, he's collected 2,000 more resources. Can he get this hill? This hill just seems like it's everything on this map. Every single time we watch it. Like, we had a game where someone was 50 vils, uh, 50 vils ahead earlier today on this map, and they didn't win the game until they somehow got in and built, like, six guard towers and did a, had to do a bunch of stuff just because they couldn't get past the siege. They couldn't properly balance their eco because there's just no space to breathe. Oh, man. Ozone's getting the snowball now, guys. It's zero mangadels for red. One on the way, but four for Ozone. This is bad. This is where you need something more. Red's dropping the stables. And Ozone honestly could just use these Cav Archers to try and take out the mangadel. Let's see his, his reaction time here. Okay. Loses one. He sees it. That's acceptable. He knows if he takes out this TC that Red's not going to really have gold. Imagine the amount of wood put into repairs for Red this game. See, Red, even this gold's going to be awkward, but he does have a Scorpion there. Upgrades for Red, getting plus two armor now. Pretty crazy. Does Ozone realize? Ozone loses the Mangonel. Red's holding on. What a game! What a game! Great micro from Red again. We're going to have uh, monasteries from Ozone so we could potentially convert some knights. This is crazy hold from Red, honestly. I would have been so dead already. I would not be getting plus two, massing up to six to eight knights, which could potentially change the game. Ozone still has his fish somehow. Red, I think, just went passing on the other screen, but I I'm not going to look yet. That's on the mini map. Because we're looking at the micro here. This is intense stuff. Oh, when he lands a sick attack round. Let's go, Red. Yeah, the Navy actually just missed the fish, funnily enough. Now Ozone's going to push this TC. I mean, that's, that's fine, I guess, to maybe try and switch targets. But if Red... Honestly, if Red counterattacked with the Knights before he did anything, that would be sick. It would completely distract Ozone from the push in the front. And if it distracts Ozone from the push in the front, maybe he makes mistakes there. Crazy. Yeah, I don't think you can actually hit this gold mine easily without the Mangonel pathing beyond the tree. And here, there's just a Mangonel chilling. Red's waiting because he doesn't want Ozone to realize how big of a threat the Knights are. He wants this attack to win him the game and take us to a game four, guys. I've been really impressed with the resilience of Red. Redemption's in for Ozone, though. So now he can convert the defensive siege. Knight's still waiting. Dude, Ozone's base is so open. But Red is like... Again, he feels like if he clears this, he can win the game. He's under so much pressure. He feels like he has to clear it now. Ballistics for Ozone. Red's still waiting. Scorpion goes down. CA, you're going to dive underneath the TC. And Red's going to show his hand. He's going to show that he has the Knights. Now, this is probably best case scenario for Ozone. Because he has a second or two to get conversions locked in. But it is plus two armor. And that's a lot of Knights. It's a lot of Knights. I think the Siege could go down. Now, Ballistics just comes in for Ozone. He could always make a couple more Monks. He could always make a couple more Cav Archers. But Red at least could breathe near that Town Center now. But can he, like... Can he kill the CA? I think the CA are just too strong. There's still Siege over here. That's actually going to be saved by Ozone. Red trying to dodge the shots. Look at that. Tries. Fails, though. Oh, no. And now that TC will probably be in problems. The wood line's going to get hit. And Ozone's holding. Needed more knights there, Red. And I just think... The way he engaged was the worst possible. I could tell why he did, because he wanted to save his Mangonel. But Ozone got a peek at that a little early. 
and now has a big heads up on the situation. Guys, when you play Ozone, you are just consistently smothered and you have to be really talented to be able to, to deal with it. Now, there are players, obviously he's he's 49th seed. I Personally, I think he's like maybe somewhere like 30th in the world. Maybe like 35th, 40th, it depends on the map pool. Close to that, I guess. Uh, the better players can defend a bit better, and then this all-in approach, being behind an eco, just falls flat completely. But I have been on the other end of this crap a lot, and I thought Red had a chance, but he got up to 12 knights and that didn't work, and now Ozone can have monks and more CA than he's ever had. Their seed is basically their ranking. But I didn't want to put ranking because that could imply other things like... Like saying that it's their ranking is kind of incorrect because that could mean ELO. So... I've had to answer that question a lot. Hopefully people get that. Oh, sick micro from Ozone. What in the world was that? Eco's getting closer now too because it's... uh. It is three TCs for Ozone. Oh, two TCs for Ozone. Loses a Mangonel, loses another Mangonel. But, ends up getting the clear. It's still pretty costly for Red. And Ozone, three TCs, like I said. It does have some Vils on stone somewhere. So maybe we'll consider uh, Guard Towers. Or saving up for a castle. I actually... I think buying a castle pretty much ends this game. You don't even need to push further. And Mangonel converted from the Monk. Now Ozone gains another Mangonel. Uh, yeah, I think Ozone's got this one locked down here. He's played this really, really well. And it was two differences of approaches. Basically, Ozone said, I don't need the fish. I'm not going to focus on the water as much. My priority is going to be land. And Red prioritized water and prioritized eco a bit more. I think Red's decision suited his civilization very well. So I, I think it was the right way to play it, but... Just non-stop pressure from Ozone. Crazy. And you you're just thinking, like, can I catch a break? Like, can he not notice me for half a second for once in his life? The really, It must be a really frustrating feeling here. If you're Red. It's non-stop. You land a shot on the CA, they just get healed up again. You pop out with any siege, Ozone's always looking. He's never going to give you that opportunity to get a shot in on these Mangonels. And then there's still siege hitting this TC. There's 33 cab archers. And how are you supposed to have wood for siege when you have to repair all the time? And that gets converted! So now another Mangonel gets converted. Crazy. Red for a second. He just saw one Mangonel. Literally 30 seconds ago, we just saw one Mangonel. Clicked over there to hit it. Ozone backs away. Kills the Vils in Ozone. Beast mode. This guy's good. This guy's good at Age of Empires. I'm really impressed with Red. I, I really am. I know that, like, the 3-0 scoreline doesn't look great. But as far as I'm concerned, he's relatively new to the pro scene. I don't know a lot about him. I actually want to talk to him. Um, I wasn't even sure what to call him. His in-game name is Lamique now. I don't know if it's Lamo, his sign-up name, or Lamique, but a uh, player who I, I saw around 2k3 last year seems to have a lot of talent. <clears throat> Ozone has, has played, I think, like more games than anybody on DE, which is kind of a fun fact about him. Uh, maybe not more than Huang, but uh, has played a lot and is improving ever so slightly, and he moves on to the next round. A really complete series there. Very different maps as well, right? We saw Feudal Age all-in type style, game one victory. We saw a big like late game Monk Treb victory from Ozone and then Castle Age. So he showed Feudal Age, Castle Age, Imperial Age prowess. Good conversions here. Uh, 82 to 55 KD. And Cav Archers are really tough for the Romans to deal with. And you might be like, well, yeah, but you can go for Scorpions. Well, that's true until the Mangonels show up. But it's all very map-related as well. The middle hill is so valuable. We've seen that so far in the first round. So I think there's going to be a lot of games where someone has the greater economy, but they lose because they are just they have no wood. They have no space, and the opponent has a center hill there. 